The Nagoya Heat returned with a vengeance today, both outside the arena, with temperatures above 30, and inside, with middle Sunday fixtures designed to fire up the larger crowd. The first attractive match before the fans came in Division 3, and saw hefty teenage talent Adami Fuji take on university star Takuma Ishizaki, bidding to extend his unbeaten pro record to 11. and a firm Ishizaki forearm and elbow under the pit ended Atami Fuji's quest for an outside left before it had even begun. Impressive stuff. In terms of overall entertainment though, Ishizaki was rather outdone by his foe's stablemate, Hikari Fuji, in his bout with Ohata. After spinning the full 360, Hikari Fuji charged well, parried from the right, got the left inside, and was given plenty of chest for his forearm to hit. As coach Asakayama notes at ringside, Ohata's foot went out before another deft flick sent him tumbling. It was soon the turn of Asakayama's student, Kaisho to rouse his home fans with a suitably stirring display against Division 2 leader, Abi. <laughs> and Kaisho ended Abi's winning streak at 21 to tie level for the divisional lead. You could see Abi leaning obviously to his left in the crouch, because I was planning to attack from the side, was the reason he gave. But as you saw, he continued, it didn't go so well. So I'll be concentrating even more from tomorrow. Abi also insisted his taped left calf was fine, although it didn't look to be supporting weight. Perhaps he meant fine as compared with Asabenke, whose legs seem to crumble every time he falls. Whereas Abi and Kaisho are thriving on their Division 2 returns, Division 2 debutant Ko Tokuzan has not seen his thrusts have the desired effect. Are his taped elbows letting him down, we wonder? And did he bank on belt fighter Dai Shoho returning fire like this? After five successive losses, that's now three successive wins for the Oitakaze man. One more than Kotokuzan. Now, whereas Middle Sunday in March gave us Uda Enho as our lightweight spectacular, today we got Uda Ishiura. And here's how it went. The left kept Uda's right out of action, and the right hook knocked him off balance for the final attack on the chest. I didn't persevere enough, was Uda's take. He's a difficult foe to handle, but I'll use this bout as a reference when plotting strategies in future. I learned a lot today. And he remains keen to improve. I don't look on 4-4 as anything to shout about, he said. I'd rather say I've slipped to 4-4. Four
And no, being back in Division 1 is not fun. Mitake Umi looked unusually driven and focused ahead of his Tachiai with Takayasu. He's been waiting to beat this man since May 2019. Would that wait finally end today? No, it would not. In another illustration of the gap between Mitake and genuine Ozeki material. I got the belt and made sure to set myself up properly, said Takayasu. And I feel my condition improving with each day. On to our joint leaders then. First up, as always, was Tedeno Fuji, keen to avoid the sort of runaround his opponent had given Hakuho yesterday. Here, Teru kept his focus to two moves alone. The outside left, that's what the clamp was supposed to set up, and slapping down at the first sight of Nape. It was all about keeping cool and keeping him in front of me, Teru said. He's a good mover, so I had to watch him well, too. Tobizaru, meanwhile, confirmed his decision to dive in was influenced by his failure to hurt Hakuho from distance yesterday. Speaking of Hakuho then, he was handed another first meeting with a small-bodied foe in the form of Koto Eko. <laughs> Once constricted by the outside left, Eko had nowhere to go, but into Terano Fuji, and with somewhat less intensity than Hakuho into coach Edagawa, who was thankfully all right. Hakuho thus extends his record of making it through the first eight unbeaten to 51 times. I guess that's the first hurdle cleared, he told reporters. It was my first tournament match with Koto Eko, but I'm pretty sure I've trained with him before. Today I just slid my body in tight and went forward with decent timing. But I tell you, you couldn't picture this five weeks ago, given the condition I was in. For now then, the story is about the Yokozuna's miraculous comeback. But as week two progresses, the focus will shift to a question on many of our minds. With his future secured if he completes this event, does he have any incentive at all to beat Teda Fuji? Next Sunday. <laughs>